Inflation may be an unavoidable economic fact of life, but it's starting to make a lot of people very nervous. Economists and investors believe inflation is primed for rapid growth as trillions in federal stimulus spending is layered on top of the Federal Reserve's rock-bottom rates, a growing economic recovery and masses of newly vaccinated shoppers who are eager to spend. The question is whether the coming wave of inflation will be a modest, easily managed wave or a dramatic flood that will roll markets, kneecap savers and cause the Fed to rapidly hike rates, slowing the recovery. Hi, my name is Darius Meka, Senior Investment Advisor with Nor Private Wealth. In this two-part series, I'll talk about why inflation can be risky when it gets out of hand, why holding bonds in a high inflationary environment can cause serious damage to your retirement savings, and what are some of the better alternatives you can use to satisfy your needs for safety and income. So let's jump right in. So what is inflation? Inflation is the rate at which your cost of living increases every year. The Bank of Canada and most central banks in developed countries have set their target to 2%. Inflation is good when it is mild. There are two situations where this occurs. The first is when inflation makes consumers expect prices to continue rising. When prices are going up, people want to buy now rather than pay more later. This increases demand in the, in the short term. As a result, stores sell more and factories produce more now. They are more likely to hire new workers to meet demand. It creates a virtuous cycle boosting economic growth. The second is when it removes the risk of deflation. That's when prices fall. When that happens, people wait to see if prices will drop more before buying. It cuts back demand and businesses reduce their inventory. As a result, factories produce less and lay off workers. Unemployment rises, leading to wage deflation. Workers have less money to spend, which reduces demand even more. Businesses lower their prices. That makes deflation worse. For this reason, deflation can be even more corrosive to economic growth than inflation itself. A good example of deflation would be during the Great Depression in the 1930s when prices fell over 10%. Higher inflation isn't necessarily a bad thing for the average population. When inflation runs high, workers are empowered to ask for bigger raises to keep up with the cost of living, and debt holders get a break on their obligations as their borrowed money becomes comparatively less valuable. Life becomes a little more complicated for savers and retirees living on a fixed income, or for households with no discretionary spending, since inflation erodes the purchasing power of every dollar. When people retire, they typically need two things out of their retirement savings. One is safety and the other one is income. This has been traditionally achieved by adding bonds to the investment portfolio. The rule of thumb in terms of the percentage of stocks an investor should have in their portfolio is subtracting the person's age from 100. So for example, a 30-year-old would hold 70% in stocks and 30% in bonds while a 60-year-old would have 40% in stocks and 60% in bonds. However, this no longer holds in today's environment because interest rates are at historical lows and expected to increase. The central banks will raise short-term interest rates to reduce the demand for credit and consumer spending. This prevents the economy from overheating. Since bond prices and yields move in opposite directions, rising yields would mean falling bond prices, which can generate negative returns in the bond portion of the portfolio. The second impact of inflation is less obvious, but it can eventually take a major bite out of your portfolio returns. This important effect is the difference between the nominal return, the return a bond provides on paper, and the real or inflation-adjusted return. To understand this concept, consider a shopping cart of food that a person buys at the supermarket. If the items in the cart cost $100 this year, inflation of 3% means that the same group of items 
should cost $103 a year later. That same person has a short-term bond fund with a yield of 1%. Over the year, the value of a $100 investment rises to 101 before taxes. On paper, the investor made 1%. But in real world money, they actually lost $2 worth of purchasing power. The real return was therefore minus 2%. So now that we agree that bonds are no longer the solution for your retirement, what should you invest in that will create the safety and the income you need? I'll answer this important question in the second video of this series, so stay tuned. That's it for today's video. I hope you found it valuable. And if you haven't done that already, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. I read and reply to every single one. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.